Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 267th installment in the Torah portion of the week. We are holding by Parshas Veschonon, by Parshas Veschonon, a packed Parsha. Speaks about Moshe Rabbeinu praying and praying and praying to get into the land of Israel. And we have decrees and ordinances. We have Moshe not allowed to enter the land, exile, return. Um, God's not going to abandon you. Setting aside the cities of refuge. We got the Ten Commandments again, a pack parsha. We're going to start from the beginning. We're going to start from the beginning here, and it the the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty three, verse one. What does the Torah tell me? The Torah tells me I implored Hashem at that time, <coughs> saying, verse twenty four, my Lord <coughs> Hashem Elokim, you have begun to show your servant your greatness, your strong hand, for the powers there in heaven and earth. And can perform according to your deeds, according to your mighty acts. Verse 25, let me now cross and see the good land. It's on the other side of the Jordan. It's good mountain and the Lebanon. All right, so what does Moshe Rabbeinu say? Moshe Rabbeinu is telling you, or let's say better, he's telling God, let me cross over. Let me cross over. Let me cross over the Jordan. Let me go into the land of Israel. What's the problem? Problem is, God said, forget it. He said, you're not allowed in. Now, God made a vow here. In theory, God can undo it. God can say, okay, I'm going to let you in. He could do that. Right? It seems highly unlikely, but you never know. So Moshe Rabbeinu entreated him and, and, you know, and said all these prayers in order for him to enter. God kept pushing him off, pushing him off, pushing him off. And finally, God says, that's it, enough. Not changing my mind. You know, and that's it. Right, but it is brought down. Had he continued, God would have changed his mind. But okay, let's say, Moshe Rabbeinu stops. Moshe Rabbeinu stops it. Now, you can look at this in a, in, a, in a number of different ways. So one way is God made a decree. The decree stands. How can you go against the decree? Right, we'll answer that, but that's one question. You might tell me it depends what type of decree. Because the reality is maybe a certain decrees you can't uproot. So that's one idea. What type of decree was it? On the other hand, if, if God made a decree, no matter what type of decree, you can't overcome it. No possible way, right? So there are a few ways to look at it. Either God makes a decree and he gives you the opportunity to try and overcome it, or he doesn't. So, so we'll look at the second part first. God made a decree. Moshe Rabbeinu hits the rock, Parshas Chukas. He hits the rock, and God says, you're not allowed in the land. Because you and Aaron, you didn't sanctify my name. Now, we spoke in Parshas Chukas way back when. Try to understand the sin of, the, of hitting the rock. Very hard to understand. But even so, even if God spoke to the rock, isn't that... Also, a sanctification of God's name? Sure. 100%. But he didn't do what God said. If for God it was desecration of his name, Moshe Rabbeinu not allowed in the land. Now, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't give up. Though. So I would say, I would say that if that's the case, then what's going on here? Because if God made a decree, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu himself, you're not going there. It's not going to happen. Now, Moshe Rabbeinu also knows God has another side to him. What's the other side to God? Compassion. God has a lot of compassion. Not infinite. Certainly not an infinite amount, but he's got compassion. He can have a lot of compassion. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, God made a decree. It's not chutzpah for me to try and undo it. 
Why not? Because I can evoke divine mercy. See, God has different attributes. God has the name Hashem. Right? Yud Kei Vav Kei, that's the God of compassion. <clears throat> There's the God Elohim. The God of judgment, you have Kale, God of power, might, all different names of God here. On the one hand, I could say, uh, you know, God said this is a decree. He made a decree, you know, it's a question. So then we asked, ah, oh, but aren't there certain different types of decrees? Aren't there decrees that can be overrun? That can be overturned? Right? What decree is that? We see the decree by none other than what happened in the story of the Book of Esther. Right? As is brought down, Elijah the prophet goes to wake up. Patriarchs, Avram, Mitzach, Yaakov. You know, tell them about this decree. And they say, well, what was the decree written in? God writes a decree. You can write a decree in either parchment or in blood. If it's in parchment, it means it can be overturned. God can have mercy and overturn. If it's written in blood, there's no hope. So they send Elijah the prophet, they say, tell us what it was written in. And he goes and he sees what was written in parchment. So there's still hope. And then Elijah, he said, find someone, they say, find somebody on earth, you know, a righteous person that can, you know, overthrow this decree, can override the decree. And then he tells Mordechai. Then he whispers in Mordechai's ear. And you see that decree was uprooted. Got uprooted. Jewish people were saved. So I'll tell you another decree. It was a decree we just came through the ninth of all. The fast of Tisha B'Av, the ninth of all. Destruction of both temples. And one of the rabbis goes up to heaven. There's a decree made. The temple's going to be destroyed. And he pleads in front of God, the heavenly court. And he says, let me say in the ineffable name of God, I'll avert the decree. Well, the heavenly court Paskin so already says, ah, this is a divine decree. It's it. You can't change it. So you see, there are different types of decrees. Right? If a decree is written in blood, can't change it. If a decree is not written in blood, there's hope. Right? There's hope. The Moshe of Eno, we're not saying that God forbid it's chutzpah. That he's not listening to the divine decree. Right? He begged and he begged and he begged. He tried to invoke mercy. And he almost succeeded. Had he kept going, he would have succeeded. But he stopped. God told him to stop, he stopped. So, what do we see? We see that divine mercy can override anything. We have the power to invoke divine mercy. Person could have, God forbid, you know, bad sickness. Parnassa, livelihood issues, issues with their kids. And what's our mantra we always say? The mantra is, God, I deserve nothing. You, you know, you gave me life. You gave me a bit, the ability to breathe, to live, to eat, to serve you. Says the Lord of the love of the of hearts. Do we do even a quarter of what we're supposed to do? No. But God allows us to live anyway. God gives us the ability to serve him anyway. See, if it was up to me and I was playing God and put on my funny George Burns glasses, my funny mustache, what would I say? Come on, that's what you serve me. You pray three times a day, you mind somewhere else. You don't pay attention to what you do. 
you know, you make blessings you shouldn't do. You do all these terrible things. Not to mention, God forbid, things on purpose. If all to me, forget it. Get that. That's how you serve me. And God's not a sycophant over here. Doesn't need my praises. But he gives me the ability to draw close. If he gives me the ability to draw close, I should do it right. The highest level I can. But God has mercy. God can have mercy. A lot of mercy. So even when we're down, and we, we could be really down. You know, it's the bottom of the ninth. Base of the loaded, three and two counts. Either he's going to get a hit, score a lot of runs, could strike out, could hit, you know, ground into a double play. You can do a number of things in the game. You end the game and win it, you end the game and lose it. We still have that power. It's the bottom of the ninth. Things are looking really, really bleak. But we can invoke divine mercy. Even not through formal prayer. I don't necessarily need formal prayer. I can just pray spontaneously. Say, God, you're the one in charge. You're the one who runs everything. I am nothing. I'm an infinitesimally small speck of cosmic dust. I don't deserve help. Right? I'm less than a worm. Going to get eaten by worms later. We're nothing. You have the ability to change anything at the blink of an eyelash. As we say, Kaharify, the blink of an eyelash. You got this. You can do it. Like nothing. I can't tell you many, many times. Not always look pretty. Not going to say it always look pretty. But time and time again, you know, I'm all, I can't say I'm surprised. But what happens? Person may be down. May be really down. You know, say, God, what do you, what do you want here? Doing my best. Yeah, we have our evil inclination. But I'm trying. You're the one that matters. You're the one I bow my knee to, not to anyone else. You're the one who can change everything. You're the big boss. Or as they say here in Israel, big boss. You're the big boss. Change anything. Do anything. And sometimes, you know, we sit here and worry, 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 which, you know, that's what we do. We have to put our best foot forward, as we always say. But sometimes, or maybe a lot of times, we worry for nothing. Because God then throws us a bow. A proverbial bow. He says, what, you think I'm not here? You don't think I can help? Watch this. What am I going to do now? And there are times where I sit back and I laugh. You know, and I'll say, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> like Monty Hall, let's make a deal. Say, so here's the deal. You do this for me, and again, something small, which asks really for big things. You get me out of this, I'll give you this. But you have to you have to uphold your end of the bargain to the best of your ability. You know, God changes something and helps you. You know, you have to you have to give thanks, you have to show gratitude. What are you gonna give him? Now it might be something, God's mind, something stupid, something minor for us, it might be a big thing for this cream puff generation. Okay, but we have to remember God can do anything at any time. So again, I'll say it myself, there are many times I just sat there and laughed. <laughs> Nothing else to do. Certain things happen, I was like, what are you kidding? Like out of nowhere. Absolutely out of nowhere. We at least expect it. People say that doesn't happen to me. You know, if a person's really down, you don't stay down fast. Could be for this amount of time, that amount of time. It could happen over and over and over again until we get the message. See, when things are going good, we forget. We don't pray like our life depends on. 
Oh, when our backs are against the wall, <laughs> then we pray with a lot of fervor, a lot of fervor. We have to remember who's the one in charge? God. He's calling the shots. He wants to make it easy for you, he will. He wants to make it hard for you, he also will. We have to remember who's calling the shots. So there have been many times. Many, many times. We've had certain circumstances. Certain circumstances that, that have happened. And we forget. Our back is against the wall. Back is totally against the wall. Who are you going to turn to? God himself. Can't forget. He calls the shots. We don't call the shots. He's always there. Things can change at the blink of an eyelash. We have to believe it. We have to be able to see it. You're going to say it's not so easy. Could be. Doesn't mean he's not there. Doesn't mean he's not in charge. But sometimes he'll throw us a bone. He'll throw us his proverbial bone. Say, what? You think I wasn't here? You think I didn't hear you? I took care of things when I wanted to. Now you have another understanding. Now you know the one who's in charge. So act like it. Don't take things for granted. Things can show up at any time. Any time. And we worry. We worry. I'm not saying we don't have a right to. But a lot of times we worry for nothing. You know, the situation will get straightened out some way or another. Even if it doesn't look pretty. Okay. But isn't he the one in charge? Isn't that the mantra? So it says Moshe Rabbeinu over here. I'm going to entreat God. And I want to invoke his mercy. And through his mercy, God will do whatever I need him to do. We have to remember who to go to first. You have to put your best foot forward, no question. But see, we at least expect that that's where to expect it sometimes. And things can come out of left field. And I'm, you know, again, I'm talking about myself. I'm going to say, you got to be kidding. I'm not going to say I'm not thankful. Tremendously thankful. We just forget. You know, we forget very basic things. God is mercy. And things can change in the blink of an eyelash. And it can. Overnight. That's what we say in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Who's going to be rich? Who's going to be poor? Right? The person could become rich in the year, could be poor in the year. Because everything, lose a lot, could gain a lot. We put our best foot forward. God's in control. And that, we can't forget. I want to remind everyone of class and duties of the heart every Tuesday, nine o'clock Eastern time, gate of self accounting. Sunday, a packed day, book of Leviticus, chapter 16, uh, nine o'clock Eastern time, four o'clock Israel time, no I nations, no I classes, 2 30 Eastern time, 9 30 Israel time on Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, five o'clock Israel time, uh, Q A's, uh, Tanakh talk controversial issues every Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern time at night. Pirkei Avos, Ethics of Our Fathers, every Saturday, 2.30 Eastern time, 9.30 Israel time. Conversion class. Anyone interested in any of this, find me on Facebook at Michael Chaim Kaufman or Beyond Orthodox Conversion Judaism. You can send me an email, RabbiChaimKaufman at gmail.com, R-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com.